3.5 or in some cluster. Hello everyone, my name is Choi Young-jun. I work for Harlem University College of Medicine located in Gangwon-do in South Korea. And there are, so um, in South Korea, it seems that we have a um, little lower uh, number of the COVID-19 cases these days. So there are some interest from um, the colleagues overseas in regard to our um, public health interventions and management. And so here, we are going to briefly share about um, some lessons that we learned from South Korea in terms of responding to COVID-19 during the past four months. So if we go back about four months prior, Korea was struck with one of the first waves of COVID-19. Now it's, it is, we have a um, little less of cases uh, compared to other regions or other countries of the world. And by looking to our epic curve, um, now it seems we have flattened the curve a bit, but there have been some periods um, of the epidemic surge. And also we have a, had a period called the pre-epidemic uh, COVID-19 phase, which we were lucky to have some um, time to pre prepare for this. So um, when we rewind the clock a bit, we had the largest outbreak of MERS or the Middle East co um, coronavirus um, respiratory syndrome outside of Middle East. We had um, 186 cases compared to 2,400 cases um, mostly confined in Middle East. Um, this, the, which the outbreak uh, mostly confined to um, the hospital transmission. This is a diagram of one of the largest hospital in South Korea that had the super spreading event of MERS-CoV. So we had this um, the chance to uh, look back into our public health system and enable us to uh, review and fix um, the, the problems that we had um, in terms of um, the system, including like in inadequate quarantine systems or the limitation in terms of the epidemiological um, investigations in terms of the human resources. Uh, which all ad added up into our um, the the capacity to scale up the testing um, the COVID nineteen suspected patients as um, large and early as possible. This is one of the data that comes out from um, in uh, as of early March when we compared to other countries, we had the largest um, PCR tested number of the PCR tested compared to other the countries. So. Um, December last year, so we were quite lucky that we had a, like the routine, the tabletop exercise um, to from to month basis. In December seventeenth, we had this um, tabletop exercise on this uh, scenario of so-called disease X, and which captured the some issues including the role and responsibilities between the public health agencies. But we were very lucky to have this kind of exercise just right before the occurrence of COVID-19. So this was the, our pre-epidemic period that we had this first patient of COVID-19 who comes from Wuhan, China on January 19th. This patient was first screened um, at the airport and was found to have the fever over 38 degrees and found the later um, this patient developed a fever, uh, fever, chills, and myalgia, but surprisingly did not have much of the symptoms for um, pneumonia for the first, first three days. So we call this patient walking pneumonia, meaning this patient was quite feeling well and could have spread the virus easily by walking um, through the, across the town uh, without uh, being noticed. So we, we, we found this 
COVID-19 was very contagious, which also was supported by the viral kinetic study by seeing the patient who shed the virus for more than two weeks. And also coupled with um, other epidemiological investigation files that we had the, from the first uh, index patients of um, uh, 16 um, patients, we had more than th uh, three generations of the spreads. And although we had a, a low reproductive numbers of 0.48, meaning one person can infect 0.48 persons. We have had a surge of epide epidemics from a super spreading event related to the uh, religious mass gathering called Shincheonji, which also linked, could link back to the, um, the psychiatric hospitals uh, where there was uh, some mass casualties from this, some, the, one of the most vulnerable population in South Korea. But Overall, the number of the patients of COVID-19 has skyrocketed. If you see the R0 before this uh, incident in Sinchonji was um, 0.5, now we have more than 3.5 or in some clusters, there were more than seven or eight secondary cases per one patient, which confined to a specific uh, region called uh, Daegu and uh, Gyeongsangbukdo. Um, and most of the cases of COVID at this point was from Daegu and Gyeongsangbukdo. So I took this photo on March 20th um, in Seoul Station, which, is, uh, which used to be the best, um, busiest place in South Korea. And it, at this point, we were discussing um, about procurement and distribution of the facial mask to the lay public. Um, during this period, there were more, more than 100 um, clusters of COVID-19. There were outbreaks in various places from um, the call centers, um, to schools, the daycare centers, and so some of the mass gatherings. This is the lay map of uh, the call center that COVID-19 has occurred. The, these blood, blue dots are the, the patients of COVID-19. You see how contagious this COVID-19 could be. And luckily we had had a low fatality rate compared to other countries. So South Korea at this point in March, we, the, the case fatality rate was r around uh, 1.3 uh, compared to other countries like Italy had a 9.5. So I don't have a good science to support this, but the age structure of the affected persons, affected populations were um, different between the countries. We have had a um, good triage system, meaning that high risk patients or those who were very sick were designated to the 190 plus um, national designated isolation units across the country. So for um, the people with a lower risk of COVID-19 or those who have had a non-severe illnesses were designated to so-called community treatment centers or some people even were monitored at home um, which um, the out-of-hospital monitoring was conducted by the public health centers um, uh, um, twice a daily basis. So, um, so we had, had a rigorous contact tracing efforts um, throughout the outbreak period that includes not just the investigation, risk assessment, or the contact classifications and measurements, um, but this contact tracing was enabled from uh, from the uh, the classic shoe leather epidemiology of the just interviewing the patients, and um, the the team was enabled to get the clinic visit records from um, the the hospitals the GPS and the CCTVs from the police and the cell phone companies and the credit card trans transaction logs from the, the finance ministry as well. And this system was from the epidemiological investigation support system, which was um, the, the cooperation between the government bodies from the national health insurance company, from the, the police and the financial service commissions as well. And there were some criticism in regard to the personal identifications 
we are giving too much of the personal um, the IDs to the public, and there are the, some um, the the areas that we should discuss further. But in in as an outcome of these contact traces, we have had a um, large number of the contact traces. This this is um, the data for um, two thousand three hundred contact traces from the thirty first index cases that were imported in South Korea. So we had a um, more than 80 persons, um, uh, the contact traces per person during the first um, 20 days or so in Korea. And um, the, the bar graph is the confirmed cases and the line graph is the contact traces. You see the number of gaps that we, we, had, a, um, we had the capacity to conduct during the uh, outbreak phases. Um, this all were um, owed to the transparency and the, the trust um, that was formed between the, the, the population and the government. So this is like the daily reporting, um, the dashboard um, that was formed by the government, including for the number of the confirmed cases, deceased persons, number of the released, persons released from the isolations and so forth. And there were like that very transparent uh, information sharing from the government. There were like once or twice the interviews that were made um, by the director of the Korea City C um, every day. And it seems that now we have the flattened the curve and have discussed uh, the social distancing about two months prior. And if we see the impact of the social distancing, um, that that we. This is the, the curve of the influenza activity in South Korea. Since the start of the social distancing, we have had no cases of influenza um, after this. So it was also quite impactful in Korea. And now we are discussing um, if we are ready to reopen the schools for the children. So from the earliest, earliest um, the investigation, we knew that most of the um, the cases in children or the middle schoolers or the high schoolers who have had a large uh, social interaction. So we were discussing which um, age group has have the uh, priority for going back to the school early. So, but in general, uh, from our um, the epidemiological data, we knew that most of the cases in children were transmitted um, domestically. They do shed the virus for a longer period of time. That this is one of the date of the first case of children COVID in South Korea that shed the virus more than um, two weeks, nearly three weeks, and also coupled from a, um, the viral kinetic study from a mother and the newborn that shed the virus for a very long time, more than eighteen days. But luckily, from our epidemiological data, we see that um, the children are not very transmissible to, to others. We had only two cases of um, the, uh, a child transmitting the virus to others, which was very different from uh, adults. And this, this um, data, coupled with the academic societies um, in South Korea, we had more than nine academic societies came into the public-private a partnership with the government to um, make the guidelines to provide the evidence for forming the um, uh, to provide the the rationale for the public health policies and from from the um, private side also uh, brought the ideas of the drive-through centers there were more than 20s uh, 80s of these uh, across the countries and also includes the um, the, the walk-through centers which enables um, us to test um, uh, more people in an efficient way. So now we are in a maintenance phase since uh, late uh, April. So um, we are discussing um, to transition from the sustained social distancing to more of the daily life uh, containment. Um, there were about 30 subcategories of the guidelines in terms of the social distancing, the daily lives. We are about to resume the outdoor activities and reopening of the public outdoor sports facilities.
and not just the um, in the national level or the, gov uh, the in terms of the central government, we were uh, we had a good uh, public and private partnership in the um, the provincial government of Gangwon-do. This is one of the earliest meetings that we had in Gangwon-do when there was the first outbreaks in um, places other not in Gangwon-do but other places in Daegu, Gyeongbuk, and Seoul. And there was the, the fever screenings that were set up in the, in the community. And also the, the provincial government has provided the facial mask to the, the public and also included the, the disinfecting the, the services uh, in the community as well. So all of these efforts and the engagement with the community has provided, provided a good, uh, robust uh, um, the impact on mitigating the COVID and also containing the virus to spread to the community. But my takeaway is that um, going back to the public health basics on uh, infectious diseases, our goal is to reduce the transmissibility, the contact rate, and the duration of infectiousness. So everyone in this field knows these equations, but it was very crucial to, that us to have the community engagement to do of, um, have more of wearing facial masks, wash your hands, um, keeping the social distancing, and also to do the mass screening, contact tracing, and isolations. So these, um, um, these operations or these activities were not possible um, without the, the engagement of the, of the community with the local government. So we feel the, the research and the evidence-guided policy was at the heart of the response of COVID-19 in Korea and Gangwon-do. And we hope that um, this sharing of information was helpful in um, in your context, in, um, in your countries and in your communities and we'll be happy to share more information uh, when it is needed. Thank you very much.